at the start of the week in episode 1510, we talked about leading someone to Christ, and Pastor John walked us through four treasure chests of glorious truths that we need to make clear to someone who uh, wants to close with Christ, as the Puritans called it. And today we talk to new believers, and it's an email from an anonymous listener, a new believer himself. Pastor John, thank you for this podcast. I'm overwhelmed at how much I don't know about the Bible. I want to be knowledgeable about Scripture so that it can guide me, and I can use it to guide others in the future. But there is so much. I don't know where to begin. If I were studying for an exam in class, I would start with a list of essential topics to be tested on. But with the Bible, I feel like the test is life, and I don't know what I need to know to be prepared, if that makes any sense. In other words, where do I start? What is the first and most essential thing I need to know to follow Christ by reading his word? Well, my answer is probably going to be a little bit frustrating (laughs) (laughs) because he's asking for a particular truth in the Bible, and I'm going to say, Bible, (laughs) Bible, Bible, Bible. I have never met a mature, fruitful, strong, spiritually discerning Christian who is not full of Scripture. Mm and devoted to regular meditation on Scripture, and given to storing it in the heart through Bible memorization. And that's not a coincidence. So what I want to do is persuade our new believing friend that it is absolutely essential, after coming to faith in Christ, to be radically, deeply, experientially devoted unshakably, unwaveringly persuaded that reading and meditating on and understanding and memorizing and enjoying scriptures is absolutely essential for the Christian life, which would include being in the Word, capital W, every day with the aim that we will meet God there and little by little the glory of His truth will fill and transform our lives. And that that may seem obvious to them or to others, but it isn't obvious because I know fairly well along Christians who don't do this. Mm. They don't do this, and they've been Christians for years, and they're lackadaisical. They think it's optional because they, they know so much already, and they read so many other books. I don't regard that as a very good habit at all. I think it's dangerous. So I have 10 reasons that I believe this, 10 reasons to make the Bible reading, Bible understanding, Bible memory essential to Christian life. Resist feelings of self-sufficiency that say, I don't need the Scripture every day. So here are my 10 reasons. Scripture saves. Take heed to yourself and to your doctrine. Hold fast, for by doing that, you will save both yourself and your hearers. 1 Timothy 4.16 Salvation has happened to God's people. Salvation is at this moment happening to God's people. And salvation will happen completely at the resurrection of God's people. And it is happening now by means. Paul says, hold fast to the teaching and save yourself. God saves us daily by Scripture. Number two, Scripture frees from Satan. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, 32. And the context is that Jesus is showing the Jewish leaders that though they think they are not slaves, you are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's will desires. Satan is your enemy, young Christian. He is a thousand times stronger than you are. So John writes to the young believers, I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. This is our only hope for defeating a supernatural enemy. Every time Jesus was tempted by the devil, He struck back with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and he had it memorized, so he didn't have to carry a book in the wilderness. Reason number three, Scripture imparts grace and peace. 
May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Knowledge of God gained through Scripture is not identical with grace, but Peter says it is a means of grace. If we want to be made peaceful and powerful through divine grace, Peter says, it happens in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. That knowledge is found in one place, Scripture. Number four, Scripture sanctifies. Jesus prayed, Father, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Sanctification is the process of becoming holy, that is, becoming more like Christ and like God, who is perfectly holy. This is not optional. Hebrews 12, 14 says, pursue the holiness without which we will not see the Lord. We don't become perfect in this life, but we do become holy. God sanctifies his people. And Jesus prays to his Father, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. It couldn't be more plain or more important. Number five, Scripture gives joy. You received the word, Paul says, in much affliction to the Thessalonians, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, or Psalm 1, verse 2. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Life without joy is unbearable. The Christian life is a life of many afflictions, but in them all, God sustains joy, and he does it by the Scriptures. Reason number six, Scripture protects us from destructive error. Until we attain the unity of faith, Paul says, and the knowledge of the Son of God, so that we may no longer be carried to and fro by every wind of doctrine, How do young Christians stop being leaves blown around by cultural and theological winds and opinions? Answer, the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Knowledge that they experience not as the opinion of man, but as the Word of God. That's found in one place, the Scriptures. Scripture is the hope of heaven. That's number seven. Scripture is the hope of heaven. And what I mean by this is that full understanding, full enjoyment of the truth of Scripture will be experienced only in heaven. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully, even as I have been fully understood. The knowledge of God, all the fullness that a created being can properly comprehend and enjoy, the knowledge of God, will not be withheld from us indefinitely. The frustrations of our present limitations of understanding and enjoyment will be removed. How fitting it is then that we be ever growing now in what will be our final joy in the age to come. Reason number eight, Scripture will be resisted by some. The time is coming, Paul says, when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings, 2 Timothy 4.3. In other words, we need to know the scriptures so that we're not taken off guard or knocked off balance or led away by false teachers. We need to receive the scriptures regularly to be ready to meet those who refuse to receive the Scriptures. Reason number nine, the right handling of Scripture is approved by God. Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. It is a precious thing to be assigned to do a very important task, and then to find the master worker approving of what he's asked you to do. We're all assigned in some measure to handle the Word of God, and what a wonderful opportunity to be pleasing to the Lord. 
Finally, number 10, Scripture gives and sustains life. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. Spiritual life, eternal life, just like physical life, must be fed. Not by bread, but by the Word of God. If you think that you have eternal life as a kind of vaccination against hell, which needs no nourishment, you don't know what spiritual life is. So, there are ten reasons for why young believers should resolve with all their might, all the might that God gives them, to make reading and meditating on and understanding and memorizing the Scriptures essential, non-negotiable in their Christian life. That is really helpful. Thank you, Pastor John, for expressing all this and for modeling for all of us this priority in your own life for so many decades. Really appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today on the podcast for our feed, our archive, or to send us your own question. Go to our online home at desiringgod.org forward slash Ask Pastor John. Well, today in the church, we hear quite often phrases like, don't trust your desires or don't follow your heart. And yet, Christian hedonism calls people to follow their hearts toward the greatest and most lasting joy in the universe. So do we follow our hearts or do we not follow our hearts? It's a very discerning question from a listener. It's up on Monday. I'm Tony Reiki. We'll see you then. Have a great weekend.